Welcome to Kimmer's Gaming. In this episode we will discuss one of the best game ports in Atari 2600, which is Miss Pac-Man. When we look back at the time when Miss Pac-Man was released, it didn't hit a whole lot of going on to begin with. Considering the pre-release perception of that time, it should have been a complete failure. Why? Well, firstly, it was an early 80s port of an arcade game. Secondly, it was a sequel. And lastly, which was one of the major causes, was that its console male counterpart which was released before this, was a disaster and was considered as the worst video game port in the gaming history. However, what we got was of a totally opposite spectrum. In Pac-Man's male counterpart we see that Pac-Man is just a mere imitation, where on the other hand Miss Pac-Man takes the limitations of Atari 2600 console and throws everything possible at it. The ghosts are distinct and there is no flickering present like before. Also its movement speed is quite better. We get multiple mazes in this. We have a fruit which actually looks like a fruit and while we are pulling a tricky move we get a genuine satisfaction rather than a more sedated pace of Pac-Man itself. Regardless of how better Miss Pac-Man is though, it is still not a good substitute for the arcade version. But fitting this challenging and intense game in 8 kilobytes of code is quite remarkable nonetheless. Yes, on comparing this with arcade version it doesn't have those funny cutscenes or the lovable music. It doesn't even have those charming sound effects and minimal yet beautiful visuals. But let's be real here. We expected that. However, it does look very close to its origin. You must have seen the legal notices that appear at the start of every game these days, mentioning what game engines were used and what studios were involved, plus all the licenses which were paid. Well, that doesn't fit well in this 8 kilobyte of code. Not even close. And we eventually skip through it trying to get something that we can actually play. To be honest, this is the most enjoyable 8 kilobyte of code I have ever encountered. I am still thinking of another Atari 2600 game which could match up to this. When we analyze the game more, we see that game's copycatting isn't only limited to the visuals. Going through the maze and munching hyphens rather than dots remains as usual. Dodging ghosts still remains the most toughest part of the game. One of the fun part in playing this game comes from taking all the risks in scenarios where we are heading towards a fruit but we see a ghost approaching the it as well. What do we do? Do we scram like a chicken or go in swinging like a hero? Those close calls of the game keeps the dopamine and adrenaline levels high. Learning ins and outs of the maze and using its many features remains the center of the game. Just when we think we have cleared labyrinth, we are presented with a new maze to master. Every new maze come with its own little tricks and tricky corners. This keeps the risk taking aspect of this game going. One of the usual things that get most arcade gamers in this game is the long straight ways. As any careless arcade gamer, we will not be afraid of little peril and will dive right in it. Only to start swearing when the two ghosts pawn us in straight ways. It will feel like a horror film, as the two evil ghosts from both sides come to eat the player's soul. And if anyone is thinking that any gamer will learn his or her lesson in this game, think again. As it is more fun to take risks no matter how many times we lose our lives we will take straightways headlong. Sometimes we don't want our nerve vessels burst while playing. Therefore, Atari 2600 comes with a select button. This comes handy at these times allowing us to adjust the number of ghosts available in the field. Say, if you want a more simple and relaxing game altogether, then just deal with one or two enemies. However, I must warn you that by just decreasing the number of enemies won't get you through. Since the challenges are not only in the number of ghosts but also in their aggressiveness and speed. They become more as you advance further. Don't be fooled as they will not chase game as much, in early stages, but later on, they will chase you like a paranoid psychopath. And to be honest, it is in those levels that the game is at its best. 
As we build our skills, we find situations growing more desperate, thrilling and risky. Each factor such as mechanics, climbing difficulty and spot on collision makes this game very fast paced and addictive. It is just as good as its arcade version. Maybe it does not have the charm as its big sister, but it replicates far better than any other ports of arcade game in Atari 2600. Maybe, Atari knew that they have committed a grave sin with the game's predecessor and worked hard to regain the game as trust. If Miss Pac-Man is the act of atonement, well then I could definitely say on behalf of all gamers that Atari is forgiven. Being a game which is still existing in arcade version, there is no collections of games which includes this game. Which means, that you have to buy an actual cartridge to play this game. That is, if you want a full retro experience. Atari 26 cartridges don't come that cheap if you want the boxes. Which makes it justified since they are more than 30 years old. I was vaguely interested in getting the boxed version of this game. So why did I had Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man? Pac-Man, I had for historical curiosity, but Miss Pac-Man was one of first few games that Atari released in terms of quality conversion. Miss Pac-Man even with Atari 2600 limited hardware is an insanely addictive classic. This was my review for Miss Pac-Man. If you like this content, then give a like and a good review how you felt about it. If you want more content like these then follow or subscribe to Kimmer's Gaming. If you think others should also know about what we discussed here so far, then don't forget to share it with your friends. That is all for today. Have a nice day.